All right, people, welcome back. More card review. So in celebration, I guess, of Monarchs coming out this Friday in the TCG? I'm not really excited. I, I don't know. I mean, it's a deck that can compete against PP, so that's all fine and dandy. But I just don't like Monarchs, so yeah. Anyway, in celebration of this, uh, let's go ahead and look at a Monarch S card. Uh, this card's not out yet in the TCG, and it won't be in the structure deck. Uh... It's in some kind of special pack that TCG, I mean, that OCG has, but maybe we'll get it someday. Uh, that might be pretty good in the Monarch deck. So, this is Emperor's Freezing Air. Yeah. But, this card is always treated as a Monarch card. Uh, now, I'm wondering when they bring the card here to the TCG, if they're just going to rename it, just put Monarch. Because, this is dumb. Like, it's always treated as a Monarch card, but yeah, it doesn't have Monarch on its name. And it's just like, why, why go through all that stipulation of putting the extra text in the card effect when you can just simply just go, instead of Emperor's Freezing Air, just put Monarch's Freezing Air. It's not that difficult. Then you don't even have to have that line of text. No. Ah, whatever. Anyway, let's go ahead and look at this card. Keep in mind, this is always a Monarch card. It's always treated as a Monarch card. So you can search it and do all the shenanigans that you do with the Monarch spells and traps. Because that's what Monarchs do, you know? They just they just love playing with their spells and traps and deity and all that crap. So that should be fun. That should be fun. Alright. So if you control a monster with 2400 or more attack and 1000 defense, you can target one set card in the field, destroy it. Okay. Uh, you can banish this card and one other Monarch Spell or Trap card from your graveyard, then target one set card and failed, destroy it. Alright, so you pretty much get to pop two set cards with this card. It's not terrible. Uh, if you play Monarchs, I play Monarchs just a tiny little bit, you know, someone suggested, oh, Monarchy Bell, and I tried it, and then that deck, I immediately started playing it. Like, it didn't work, and I just don't like Monarchs, so <laughs> my luck is terrible. I wasn't getting crack hands, and that, that, that's one of the big problems with Monarchs is they can definitely get some dead hands, you know. Uh, they can get some dead hands. Uh, the creativity in the deck is very, very, very limited. Like, watch. Monarchs are going to do well in the first YCS they come out, and people are going to take that deck, and there's not going to be a lot of changes from that main deck list. You know, they're, they're, they're going to stick to that deck probably 98% of the cards. Maybe like one or two cards are going to be changed, but a majority of the deck is going to remain the same because there's just so many Monarch cards where you're just like, yep, got to play three of that. Yeah, I got to play three Pandia. I got to play three Idea. I got to play three Eidos. I got to play three uh, of the, the Dark Emperor, three of the Light Emperor, three Monarchs on four, three of the, you know, the, uh, the searcher card it's just so many cards that you just gotta play three 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 that you know when you get to the end of the deck where it's like hey it's time for you to get creative with it this isn't you know the core this is the creativeness you got like maybe like one or two spots left so that's one of the problems with monarchs and the third problem which hopefully maybe this card can fix it is so susceptible to back row it's not even funny like monarchs get destroyed at back row you know they they use a lot of their normal summon they 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 don't really plus they kind of just uh you know, lock your, and they're kind of like a stun deck, you know? Uh, you can even argue that, you know, Pandini is kind of plus, yeah, it kind of is, you know, you Pandini, pitch, draw two, that's a zero, but then you banish and then reveal and get uh, one of the cards search, so, and you can activate both the effects per turn, so, yeah, that, that's pretty good. But, you know, you gotta keep in mind, the majority of time, it's kind of like, just like, yeah, hit you with that Monarch, a big, you know, 28 or 32, because with the Filt spell, uh, Monarch, and then uh, my Filt spell, you can't summon from the extra deck, ha 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 ha, you know, and especially with uh, PP, you know, just always having access to that extra deck, uh, you know, it's no surprise that, you know, you can just go ahead and lock your opponent out with Monarch Storm Force, being able to just be like, eh. You know, yeah, sure, that's cool. You got you got that uh that Pleiades or you got that uh got that infinity, let me go ahead and play something. Oh, you want to negate that with infinity? Alright, Monarch Storm Force tribute you off, huh? Yeah, here here's my monarch. So yeah, it's kind of it, 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 I can say it's a meta deck and it's it's more of an anti meta deck, you know. It has some things that just hurt Pepe and just the meta in general, including uh, you know, Cosmos, who can, you know, be argued as deck number two, uh, that you can see monarchs actually doing something, you know. You you can see monarchs you know, potentially taking out PP, taking out Cosmos, and topping a couple events. But, God, the deck is so susceptible to back, to back row that you just get destroyed. You get destroyed by back row. Uh, and the question is, you know, what back row hate are you going to play? Are you going to play just simply MST, one for one, alright? Are you going to play Twin Twister and uh, Pitch? You know, cause there's a couple of cards, you know. Like I said, the deck is so tight with its resources that there's not a lot of cards that you want to pitch. Uh, I mean, 
I see when I see the deck list, there's triple of that uh that trap card. Uh not the original monarch, I can't remember the other one that when it's activated you take two of your trap cards in the graveyard, put it back, draw a card, and I think you can like banish one of your trap cards or summon it back. I, I can't remember the name of it. It's in the structure deck now. It's not that maybe first monarch or the original monarch or something like that. Uh you know, generally, uh you want that grave you want that card in the graveyard. You know, and while it's like, oh, that that uh that continuous trap card effect where you have to go ahead and target two of your uh uh monarch spells and traps and turn them to a deck draw card, you want that card in the graveyard to summon back. You wanna go ahead and banish, summon, and tribute it off, you know. So uh that's a card that you can possibly pitch with twin twisters, but like I said, the deck is just so damn tight that there's not a lot of cards that you can pitch. You know, it's just like I don't know, I'd rather hold on to that, I'd rather hold on to that. So it's kinda of tight, it's kinda of tight with twin twisters. Uh, with this card, with Emperor's Air, it's searchable. It is searchable. You can go ahead and search it with your, uh, your, uh, your Panditi. You can go ahead and reveal it and throw in the cards, and your opponent, you know, adds it, and, you know, maybe they won't, and maybe they will, you know. Or you can search it through, uh, again, I can't remember the name of the card right now. It has that Dark Monarch guy, and you get to go ahead and reveal a monarch and search. I can't remember the name of it right now. I don't feel like looking it up. You don't have to tell me in the comment section. I know the card. It's just, yeah. Uh, you can go ahead and just, you know, search it with that as well. And then, hey, I control a monarch. Play this, pop, <laughs> you know. Uh, and it, it doesn't say that you can only use one of the effects on return or any of that on this card. It does not. So you can just be like, all right, well, uh, I search it out. Emperor's there. I control a monster with 2400 attack or more and a thousand defense. Pop. Yeah. Doesn't say, oh, you can't use when this, you know, during the turn, this card's in the graveyard, not during the turn. Nope, doesn't say that. So you can banish this card and one of them monarch spell and trap card in your graveyard to target one set card in the field and pop it. So you just like, pop, activate effect again, banish this and this something else, pop. Yeah, so you, 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 you uh, it's potentially a double popping, uh, you know, twin joy I mean, of course, you can't pop a uh, face up card. But two set cards, like I said, generally the back row hurts. My big problem with it is that you already have to have the monarch on the field. And nine times out of ten, you're gonna go ahead and tribute summon, summon your monarch. All the monarchs that you're playing have good effects. All of them, you know, whether it be the Dark Emperor, the Light Emperor, whatever. They all have great effects. And you don't want to just summon them and be beaters. You want to activate that effect. So you want to activate that effect, and then here comes that uh, Solemn Strike. And then you wasted your normal summon. Your monster's dead. You burn some resources, and that's, that, that's how it's been going down in the uh, in the OCG. Uh, just that deck has been getting crushed by back row. Uh, and you know you're probably like, oh, we don't have to worry about back row, you know that that uh, that PP deck that topped at uh, the YCS Sydney, it didn't run any back row, it didn't run any back row hate, so we're gonna fuck them up. Yeah, you really think that's gonna last? No, no, no. PP players are gonna wise up. Not only are they gonna hit, try to hit you with the back row, they, you know, they might uh, start uh, even changing around the deck and running more hate. They could, because they could probably go ahead and main deck triple twin twister, because not only are they gonna be seeing a lot more monarchs. <laughs> who are going to try to fuck you off with that fill spell mix so you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, you know, they're, they're the top deck, and top deck's got to keep uh, keep their eye out on who's coming at them. Uh, get them anti-spell fragrances, uh, get them, uh, get just rival that, you know, because if one person's like, you know, I'm going to increase my trap count, and then you know that, you know, especially if the deck tops with increased trap count, then all the decks, PP decks, are going to start net decking. So, you know, don't be surprised if you start seeing, you know, triple... Uh, you know, Twin Twister and PP, and they can run it. I mean, they go plus, what, 6 to 10 with ease? So they got the resources. They can go ahead and pitch. It's not like Monarchs where everything is so tight niche that, you know, they don't have the resources to do shit like that. Like, no, no, PP, nah, they'll search and get and plus and search and plus and draw and and, then, and get all the resources. So don't be surprised you start, start seeing Twipple, uh, Twipple, Twipple, Twipple Twin Twister. Oh my god, I can't speak. Triple Twin Twister in that deck. And while they're popping your shit, maybe they'll start popping some Aradnades. And then Aradnades will go ahead and search for that, uh, that, uh, Solemn Strike and all the good counter traps that can go ahead and fuck you. So, like I said, it, it seems like there'll be a potential. You know, if, if, if PP just stayed the way it was right now, with that one deck from West Coast, I think, with the one trap shooter's trap hole and the no main deck back row hate, then yeah, you'd fuck about game one. You'd play that Monarch filled spell, summon the big old Monarch, and be like, what? They couldn't do shit. They would just have to scoop, go to game two. So I, but they're going to so wise up. They're not. That's just not going to keep happening. They're going to wise up. They're going to start transforming their deck. Main deck in the hate. Main deck in the, not the, the hate against background and the hate against the Monarchs. And Monarchs are just going to get crushed by the weight of the plusing that PP does and popping your field spell. 
Like, it's clearly on the field I can see it, so popping your field spell, and once they pop your field spell, you're just a setting duck. You've already activated your monarch effect, you're just a 28 beater, you don't have really any effect during the their turn, I mean, unless you're going to do that whole hand, special summon the white monarch, whatever, you know. Uh, and your field spell's gone, and you don't have a lot of room for back row. There's not a lot of back row in monarch, so there's not a lot of things protecting your monarch once that field spell is gone. So, I don't know, I don't know, so... Uh, if you, and you know they're gonna stop playing back row. If you can go ahead and summon a monarch, and like I said, uh, summon a monarch, because uh, keep in mind, the advantage over this between two, this and two twisters, it's searchable. Summon a monarch. Don't activate this fact because you know that you're probably gonna get struck. Especially if they do their own round name search and show you it, you're gonna get struck. You know. And if they had solemn warning, I'm sorry, but if they just had, it's just strike. Don't activate the effect. No, you didn't. You didn't special summon. You didn't activate the effect. Freezing up Corsair. You know. Uh, what? They can't activate that uh, that strike. Pop it. Banish that into and another monarch spell and trap. Pop that other card, you know. Uh, the problem is it has to be set so you can't, you know, break pendulum scales. It's not like a, a galaxy cyclone where it's just like, oh, pop the set, now banish, pop a face up. Aha. No, it's it's set both times. But like I said, this deck, the back row is just such a threat to this deck that, you know, maybe they'll consider playing this. Or even side decking it because <coughs> back row hate on monarchs is real. So, tell me what you guys think about Emperor's Freezing Air, and uh, if you're planning on playing Monarchs, whether you uh, will main deck it, side deck it, how many will you play, or you will just go with Twin Twister MST, because you can't risk uh, this car slow card. Because you, ha you have to control the monster. There's no preemptive lead, let me go ahead and pop those two sets, now I'm going to start going with my Monarchs. You already have, to mon have the Monarch on the field, so, uh, yeah, tell me what you guys think. Uh, anyway, I hope that you guys enjoy this card view. Oh, hello, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my god. I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. Uh, of course, I'll be back next week with some more cards. Look at it. It's, it's starting to get a little bit dry. You know, I gotta, I kind of gotta look in the barrel and scrape some cards off the bottom of the barrel. It's late. There's just, there's not a lot of card, new cards that are coming out where it's just like, yes, I gotta talk about that. There's been a couple of just like, yeah, okay. And, you know, I get a lot of cards that I wanna talk about. Just, you know, what, what did DP Audio talk about? He hasn't really been talking about a lot of cards that are just like, oh yeah, I gotta definitely talk about them lately, but like I said, celebration of Monarchs getting uh, their structure deck on Friday. Talk about a couple Monarch cards, uh, or a Monarch card, and uh, just hopefully they, they step up in the meta, you know. Uh, prevent PP from cutting tier zero, and uh, you know, with hopefully Pepe getting a little bit hit on this upcoming list, and Monarchs probably not getting touched at all, uh, seeing how they fight against that deck next format when Pepe's a little bit slowed down. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next week with some more card review.